Okay. Good evening. Now we ready to start our Metta retreats after two years. We can see it person, you all are here in this meditation hall. I know some of you are new to Bhavana society. Some of you have some experience, participate in uh, some retreats in, in past. Uh, as you know, we start with uh, observing precepts. So page number 10, the big book, who has the small book, this one, page number 12. Uh, you can see clearly how we start that observances, Attangika Sila or monastic precepts, eight monastic precepts. So now you can start the first part that you have to recite all together. Yamahang Vada Mitang Vadeta Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Buddham Saranam Gachami Dhammam Saranam Gachami Sangham Saranam Gachami Dutiyam Pi Buddham Saranam Gachami Dutiyam Pi Dhammam Saranam Gachami Dutiyam Pi Sangham Saranam Gachami Chami Tatiang Pi Buddham Saranam Gachami Tatiang Pi Dhammam Saranam Gachami Tatiang Pi Sangham Saranam Gachami Chami Tisarana Gamanam Sampunam Anati Pata Veramani Sikha Padam Samadhi Ami Adinna dana veramani sikha padam samadhyami. Mm. 
अब्रह्मचर्यामी शिखा पदम सामी सुरामेरमनीसिखापदिया विखाल भोजना वेरमनी सिखा पदम समादियामी नच गीत वादित विसुक दर्शन माला गंध विलेपन धारण मंदन विभूषणाधानाशयन महाशयन वेरमनी पदम समादियामी इमंग अट्टंग शीलम समादियामी तिशरनेन सदिंगशील दमंग सदयिवा साधुक सुरक्षितपमादेन संपादेतब शीलेन सुगति यती शीलेन भोग संपदा शीलेन निबुति यती तस्मा शील विशोद This meeting is being recorded. ओके 
I think at the orientation, you might uh, get uh, enough advice what we are going to do during the, this time period. That is the only thing that uh, I'm going to discuss with you in this session. First of all, I would like to discuss about the theme of the retreats. As you know, this is Metta Retreat. Today in the morning, we were discussing how important this topic today in, the, in this world, particularly where we are living. Around the world, we can hear so many unhumanistic activities, including the war. So in this kind of uh, situation, to calm down ourselves, metta is the only solution. The Buddha said, Dhamma usada samanati etang pivata bhikkave. There is nothing like Dhamma, medicine of Dhamma. So drink medicine of Dhamma. You can get rid of all suffering from your mind. That's why you are here to drink medicine of Dhamma. Dhamma is not something just belongs to a particular group of the or country. Dhamma is the universal nature. Dhamma is not some, uh, someone delivered, but the path might be found by someone is the nature of the Dhamma. The Buddha delivered the Sutta in Anguttara Nikaya Loka Dhammata Sutta, whether Tathagata appears or not, this Dhamma exists. This is the advice, this is the way how he explained the Dhamma. The Buddha appear or not, it does not matter. This Dhamma will exist in the world. Buddha did not declare the ownership of this Dhamma because it is the universal law. It is not changing because of the time. It not changed because of the country, people, or ethnic, ethnicity, or religion. It does not matter. That is the nature of universal law. So Dhamma is universal law. Metta is one of technique that you can apply for your day-to-day -day life to increase your spirituality to practice that Dhamma, to apply that Dhamma into your day-to-day -day life. That is the meaning of the connection of Metta and the teachings of the Buddha. Buddha's teaching is not something coming from out of the world. It is not something coming created by superpower. Buddha's teaching is the nature of the universe. Anyone can in this world can stay without practicing a religion, but no one can escape this universal law. This is the different with religion and the teachings of the Buddha. So teachings of the Buddha, someone, someone can uh, uh, criticize just looking at outside activities or rituals. None of rituals, not the explain of the Buddha. Rituals created by other Pallavas, later on it's happened. But original teachings of the Buddha is directly connected with the universal law, natural law. 
So we all are under that natural, natural law. Therefore, you all are very lucky. Get opportunity to listen and practice that Dhamma and natural law as being born in a human world, as a human being, that is our responsibility. So I would like to start my discussion with this uh, slide. You can see in this slide, this is very famous slide in many uh, social medias, you can see this picture. There are two kinds of living beings. I think it might clear to you. Better to turn off this life, I think, yeah. Is it clear? Okay. These two living beings, can you guess something about these two living beings? Directly, as we know, human being and a gorilla is there. Gorilla and a person is there. Both of them are we consider as a living beings. But there is some kind of difference among these two beings. What is that difference? What is that difference? Gorilla has some limitation with their capacity. Human also have some limitation, but they have wonderful opportunity that is thinking ability, which we call thinking ability. That is the wonderful opportunity that the human being have. So human beings can develop their thinking ability to think deeply, widely. This is the way how we can develop to think deeply and widely and quickly. This thinking ability. Do we need these skills for our life? Thinking ability to think deeply, widely, and quickly. Do we need this skill for our life? Yes, we need. That is our responsibility. We born to this human world to develop that ability, that skill. In Pali, according to the Buddhist language, we can say kusala. Kusala means that. We are trying to develop our kusala. It means we are trying to develop our skills. Mainly thinking ability to think deeply, widely and quickly. For example, sometimes we do something. After done that things, we are thinking ourselves, Shah, what I did that things. Better not to do that kind of things. Why is that? Why we have that kind of thoughts? Because we realize something else after done that thing. Oh, that is not good. That is bad. The results would be unwholesome, unhappy. You can realize it later. What is the problem? Lack of thinking ability. You are not able to think deeply, widely, and quickly. So you were in the trouble there. You did something which was harmful to others, harmful to yourself. So we are, as human beings, we have responsibility. As human beings, we have duty to do things using our mind. To do things using our mind. That is our responsibility. That is our main 
activities that we should develop. So we born to this human world for what? To develop that ability, to develop that skill. So these two living beings, among these two living beings, human are more, more powerful. Humans are very powerful. You can see ourselves, what we are doing, what, we are, what kind of activities that we are engaging. We are changing all the time our environment and the society, physical form and non-physical form. We change all the time with we using our power, using our energy. But all other living beings are not part of that. They are not participating like us. You know better than me about this situation because uh, you are living in this society in 21st century. What is happening in the world, you can understand it. Nuclear power or whatever the other powers that, they, that we use. How much changes are there? For example, you might remember a few years ago, the bulb that we use, that bulb is not the bulb that we are using right now. We are now using LED bulb. This is not the last. In future, there might be some other thing. Perhaps in our young age, when we start, when we get into first grade of school, first grade in our school, we started to write letters with the help of our teachers using pen and pencil, papers and books on books. But nowadays, no one wanted to do that. Very few, near future, we don't want to use any papers, pen or pencil. Things are changing. Who are changing all these human beings? What are the main, main important things to happen that kind of changes very quickly. They are mind, not the brain. According to the Western psychologists, they, 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 some of them are believe all these changes are happening because of brain. No, all these changes are happening because of your mind, not the brain. Mind is not the part of your brain. Brain is not part of your mind brain is completely different thing it is it is not part of your physical form it is non physical this is the explanation given by the buddha so we as human beings to maintain our humanity we should develop four qualities which we call metta, karuna, mudita, upekka. Metta means loving friendliness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity. These are the qualities that we should develop to maintain our humanity. So metta is not something beside our human quality. So as human being, that is our responsibility to develop metta, loving friendliness. It is the quality of human beings. It does not mean all, all other animals does not have that. No, they also have in some degrees, but not like human beings. Humans can develop that quality into top up level, which explain in Karaniya Metta Sutta, Mahatha Yata Niyam Puttang, who has one and only child, that mother, how much love to that, they are, uh, that uh, child, this is the maximum level as mundane person can develop their metta, loving friendliness thoughts to someone else. So, this is the margin given by the Buddha in Karaniya Metta Sutta. If you can develop your metta up to this level, 
breaking all the boundaries and limits you are fulfilling your duty responsibility but it is not the easy thing you all are here to practice and develop metta metta is not alone itself always it's connecting with compassion sympathetic joy and equanimity so practicing metta you can develop your compassion you can develop your sympathetic joy and equanimity so now you know how important metta is second thing how metta important as a buddhist practitioner the buddha in his first sermon given by the buddha at uh, varanasi isipatana for five months the buddha introduced there are two path you not supposed to apply self mortification and self indulgence these two path are the path not you not supposed to apply then you should apply the middle path middle path is the path that we should apply that we should uh, practice to achieve our goal as buddhist practitioner and one other thing i would like to add here the goal that we have as a buddhist practitioner is different from other practitioners in this human world we all have same goal whether you belongs to a particular religious group it does not matter whatever the country you are living in it does not matter what ethnicity you belong to does not matter we all have one goal what is that goal to be happy to be happy in our childhood we went to school to be happy and when the time come we uh, graduating from high schools and colleges we started to do a job for what to be happy we bought houses for what to be happy we married for what to be happy i'm not asking whether you have still that happiness or not okay but we done all these things to be happy we had children for what to be happy we are asking promotion for what to be happy we are collecting money for what to be happy around the world all human beings are in this same boat we all are doing same thing same activities for what to be happy therefore happiness is the goal the goal for all not only human beings for all living beings but other living beings are not doing such a things but we do these kind of activities to be happy so now it is very clear what is our goal we want to be happy even today you all came to meditation center for what to develop your happiness is there is any trouble any uh, matters unpeaceful i mean uh, unhappy situation no, you 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 don't like to maintain those kind of situation stress anxiety depression you don't like to keep these things why you like to be happy that's why you all are here you want to be happy the buddha is the only teacher who taught us how we can find the way how we can be happy to develop our happiness in first sermon he was mentioning there are things that you have to realize which we call four noble truths you have to realize for what to get rid of all suffering get rid of all suffering you have to realize four noble truth 
to get rid of all suffering why you want to get rid of all suffering you don't like it no one like to be suffer no one like to be uh, no one like to live crying and unhappy thoughts uh, all these uh, situations none of you are accept ready to accept none of you are ready to appreciate so then we are always positive with happiness negative with uh, suffering then the buddha said you have to realize this four noble truth get rid of suffering realizing four noble truth we can establish this happiness when you establish this happiness then you always live in with love and friendliness compassionate thoughts sympathetic joy and equanimity these are the four qualities that you can establish even now we have love and friendliness thoughts but it's like a zigzag going up and down sometime we have pull up metta sometime pull up angry mind sometime we have compassion sometimes we don't have any compassion to anyone we have jealous we have anger sometimes we have mudita sympathetic joy sometimes same uh, in uh, in another time you have anger and jealous you don't like to see people you don't like to talk to them you have that kind of situation it's like zigzag going up and down this is the nature of mundane mind because we are not established our situation yet we are living with defilements therefore without our intention defilements are arising in our mind so always cause in trouble for our happiness so practicing meditation observing precepts and practicing generosity are the activities these are the activities that we can use to develop our mind how we can develop our mind in according to noble eight pole path you have to develop your mindfulness develop in mindfulness then you can gain your concentration gain in concentration you can gain wisdom you can gain wisdom every day morning we memorize there is no concentration without wisdom no wisdom without concentration one who has both wisdom and concentration he is close to peace and emancipation that is the time that emancipation is the time that you going to establish your metta karuna mudita upekka loving friendliness compassion sympathetic joy and equanimity all these human qualities you can establish there to establish establish these qualities with us so then we have to develop power mindfulness concentration and we should gain wisdom gain in wisdom is the only way that we can establish our these qualities and our happiness now you can see the path why we are practicing metta what is the reasons to practice metta sometimes perhaps you might have misunderstanding oh as buddhist practitioner you should practice only vipassana not metta but metta directly connect with the second step of noble eight pole path samma sankappa samma sankappa samma sankappa has three steps avya avihinsa sank nekkama sankappa avihinsa sankappa avya pada sankappa nekkama sankappa let go practicing generosity what we are doing you are trying to uh, reduce your desire let in go the second one is avinsa sankappa avinsa sankappa 
is the sankap uh, the concept that we should develop metta loving kindness is there i don't want to hurt anyone i am not hurting anyone then what i have to do i have to develop my loving kindness for all living beings not only me not only my family members not only my friends not only my neighbors whole universe whole universe according to the karaniya metta sutta seen unseen living near or far weak or strong born no coming to birth we have to develop our loving friendliness to a universe this is the margin this is the margin that we can achieve accomplish practicing metta which is connecting with second noble eight pole path step samma sankappa avinsa sankappa is the connection with metta and uh, uh, to develop metta practice generosity and observing precepts are the very important activities to develop metta that's why we observe precepts at the beginning what is the meaning of this ob observances why you observe these precepts the first one you promise to yourself not you repeat a tap to me but you did not promise to me any of this the first one panatipata abstaining from killing why you promise to yourself abstaining from killing what is the purpose of to have that kind of precepts why think about yourself buddhism is buddha stage in not the buddhism the teachings of the buddha is not something to just accept because its words coming from a mouth one of monk the buddha teaching is not something you have to open your mind you have to see the results you have to see why what how all these questions always you have to arise yourself to realize the truth so why you observe that precepts particularly the we are taking one for example to discuss more and to uh, clarify and realize ourselves why you want to abstain from killing why eh huh? you want to be a calm person is that meaning not harm not harm okay why you don't want to harm to any other why because of the police because of the court no around the world we can do without uh, i mean we are not allowing to catch in them all these uh, uh, <laughs> unlawful things people are doing around the world that is not the reason think about yourself the buddha said attanang upamankatta take you as an example think about yourself do i like anyone hurting me do you like do i like anyone bothering me no you don't like if someone try to kill you do you like it you don't like it then this is the reason i am abstaining from killing for why i don't like if someone try to hurt me or kill me i don't like i want to keep my life i'm very much strongly connected with my life and i like it so according to defending origination it must mean sati dang hoti if you are hurting someone it will come to you 
it will come to you back. According to third theory of Isaac Newton, he is not talking about the karma, he is talking about a physical form, every action has a reaction. If you are ready to accept his theory, third theory, then you have to accept the karma also. The Buddha said, not every action, every volitional action has a reaction. This is the Buddha's explanation. But Newton said, every action has a reaction. Buddha said, every volitional action has a reaction. So it's so, then we have to accept this is, I'm abstaining from killing. Why? I love my life. I need this life. I wanted to survive, not to die. This life. That's why abstaining from killing. I promise to myself. This is the observances. These are the precepts that you observe. Stealing also. Why you want to abstain from stealing? Because you like to have things that you already collected. If someone taking your money without your permission, you don't like it. If someone uh, stealing your stuff that belongs to you, you don't like it. Then what we should do, we have to respect others' things. This is the way how we can establish metta in this world. This is the way how we can end wars in the world. In the, in the world. This is the way how we can establish our peaceful, happy life. We have to take that opportunity ourselves to develop our spirituality without thinking others. Don't wait for others. No one is coming to protect your life. No one is coming to uh, protect your human rights. I have to protect my human rights. If you are violating any of rights, then it will come to you. So you can't uh, talking about others' rights if you are violating any rights. So this is the uh, main thing that we have to keep in our mind. So this is very important things to understand about the life. Our life means there are two things, physical body and the mind. When these two things are get together, then life is there, life is there, living being is there. Feeling, sensation, accumulation, perceptions are the main important thing, are the main important thing to understand Oh, he is a living person. He is living being. If you don't have feelings, senses, and accumulation of perceptions, then we know he, he is not living. Now you can see how powerful the mind is. Mind is the most powerful thing that we have. Practicing meditation, it is one of main technique that you can develop your thinking ability. That's why you all are here, to develop your mind. This is the death. When mind departed from the physical form, the body, you don't have feeling, you don't have sensation, you don't have accumulation, you don't have perception. Then we're ready to say, it's dead body, you died. This is very important thing. This is actually this made using uh, Madhupindika Sutta, Hannibal discourse. We think we take pictures through our eyes. We can see pictures through our eyes. We think, but actual situation is not there. According to the Buddhist explanation, the Buddha explained in uh, Mahati Padopama Sutta and Madhupindika Sutta. Chakkuncha paticca rupe upajjati. I is a physical form. You have that. And paticca rupe in here, there's an ob apple. Object is, objectives is apple. 
and tinnan sangat the mental connection is there and as a result of these three you get perception then you have feelings now you can recognize oh this is apple this apple is uh, uh, ready to eat now it's ripe enough to eat you know the taste of this apple all these things are the perceptions that you have it all these are coming through your experiences coming through your experience already you have those thoughts in your mind with the help of all these information so then you ready to say this apple is sweet i like to have when you like through your feelings then you have three kind of thoughts like dislike and neutral whether you like or dislike it does not matter end in with suffering end in with suffering but the nature is if you like something then you like to grab it if you don't like something you re reject in that is nature so all these things are happening according to our mind not the i all these are happening according to our mind you recognize it, it that that objective as apple how through your experience where you have those experience in your mind and you decided to i like it because i know the taste i know the <coughs> benefits all these information where you have in your mind in your mind so you don't like it you dislike it because you have some kind of bad experience with that or you don't know anything about that that's why you don't like it you're rejecting that but whether you grab or reject it does not matter finally it will end with suffering because in permanent one thing another thing is unsatisfied these are the reasons but ending with suffering this is the way how we collected information through our eyes is not just through our eyes even through our ear nose tongue and body we are collecting information taking sounds smell taste and touch all these are the objectives that we are taking through our five bases and then we have feelings finally ending with ending in suffering so this is the nature now we have responsibility and duty because the mind is the most powerful thing now we have obligation ourselves to develop our mind why we born to this human world to develop our humanity to increase our human quality without increasing our human qualities there is no any solution for our unhappy situation if you are unhappy if you are uh, living with troubles and unwholesome thoughts solution is to develop your mind to get rid of all unhappy stages from you and gain your human qualities through that practice yes thank you now 
is the mower, mind is the most powerful organ that we have, then how we have to develop that mind, the mind. As you know, all according to this uh, uh, graphic, uh, all the commands are coming through your mind. Then according to that commands, we do work and we, we walk and talk. According to that walk and talk, someone can decide your behavior, what kind of behavior you have, bad and good. These are the behaviors that normally we have. What is the bad behavior means? Means harmful to yourself, harmful to others, harmful to both. This one created using Rahulo Vada Sutta, Ambalatika Rahulo Vada Sutta in Majjhimanika, middle and discourse. So you can understand yourself whether your behavior is harmful to yourself or not. It is useful to you, useful to others, useful to both. That is, that is the behavior that we can appreciate, the good behavior where loving, friendliness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity is are. All these qualities are. So, Good behavior, you can see much merits, meritorious deeds are there. Why? You are full of loving friendliness, compassion, sympathetic joy, equanimity. So you are living happily and peacefully there. Where you have bad behavior, the activities done by you not useful to yourself, it is harmful to yourself, harmful to others, harmful to both. No loving friendliness, no compassion, no sympathetic joy, no equanimity. That's why that behavior became harmful to others. Why, if you don't have loving friendliness, compassion, sympathetic joy, mean you are full of greed, full of anger, full of ignorance. So you don't have qualities as human beings there. When you, when you have good behavior, when you develop your positive energies, wholesomeness, then you have morale. You have concentration. You develop your concentration because mindfulness, you already achieve and you develop your concentration. Not only that, you can reach, you can gain wisdom through all these activities. Loving friendliness, compassion, sympathetic joy and equanimity, all these qualities are there because morale, concentration and wisdom. Morale, concentration and wisdom. So now you can see the results Happiness is here. We are morals. We can, it means a, uh, uh, the precepts that you observe here, you tame in your word and actions, that is path for your happiness. That is path for your happiness. All results are coming through these applications. Through these applications. What are the applications? Observing precepts. Practicing generosity and practicing meditation. Particularly in here, we practice metta in this particular retreat. So metta directly help us to develop our insight quality, good behavior, wholesomeness, humanity, and second step of noble eight pole path. So person who has duty, responsibility in this human world as human being, these are the achievements that the person should achieve. You are very lucky and also you are fulfilling your responsibilities, participate in this retreat, particularly Metta retreat, because it is part of our human duty particularly to share metta with others. Around the world, all are suffering a lot. 
because of this lack of loving friendliness and compassion lack of compassion and loving friendliness make so many trouble it's which is irritating human life so now you are here to practice metta to fulfill your duties and responsibilities and increase your human qualities one day you may able to establish establish these qualities yourself and not only that you can achieve even supra mundane situation stages which we call so tapanna sakadagami anagami ariha but not just practice in metta you have to continue this practice turning into vipassana insight meditation but if you just practice metta yes you can take a place in brahma realm that is the maximum level that you can achieve but forget about that think about the present moment what you can gain yourself end of the re- this retreat you can measure your result the person who are sitting here now today who came here if the person going from this place to normal your place then you did not gain nothing chapo you can measure yourself whether you are able to increase your concentration mindfulness and wisdom and also whether you are able to increase your loving friendliness compassion sympathetic joy and equanimity how much degrees you are able to reduce your greed how much degrees you might you you are able to reduce your anger reduce your ignorance you can measure yourself this is the certificate that you can write down yourself we don't want to give the certificate and the test all things are with you not with us exam examiner results everything with you you can see yourself you can enjoy the life with this so as i mentioned these three activities are very important generosity discipline and meditation to change human behavior bad into good this is the way how we can develop our mind then we can go in into lack of happiness to happiness and if someone willing to gain supra mundane level it means eternal happiness also they can achieve that sir so my time is over now so i may not be able to explain all these things in detail but just keep in your mind later on when you have time at the question and answer time during this three days of the time period I'm, i might be the person who is answering your question and the questions so we can you can arise these questions then we can discuss more details okay then thank you very much then we ready to move into next step in according to our schedules uh, tomorrow morning bante ji will give guidance for the meditation at 9:15 so tonight we are not giving any guidance for meditation you can practice your own uh, since tomorrow morning yes you can practice Uh, according to our guidance and also particularly you have wonderful opportunity to practice with bante ji tomorrow morning and also palavin day morning and uh, important thing is be mindful and keep your energies with you to gain something during this th- these days from us we are willing to give something share with you our knowledge our experience with you so try to get that knowledge experience as much as you can 
this is the important thing and finally we all can be changed and establish our happiness okay thank you very much you all have a wonderful peaceful evening let us move into our next step i think if someone need the a break or five minutes then we can start meditation after five minutes thank you uh...